Um, so okay. thank you for having us today. Uh, my name's Emma James. I'm joined by my colleague Sarah Harvey. So we sit within the pensions dashboards team uh, at TPR, myself within industry engagement uh, and Sarah within the policy. So we just wanted to take the opportunity to talk, talk through dashboards uh, today. So uh, with dashboards, uh, we, we knew that uh, AE had been a resounding success, TPR. Uh, we saw though that more people than ever were saving in pensions than before. So combining that with savers ever-changing work patterns, uh, fewer people having one job for life, more people are ending up with more than one pension. Now, this can obviously be difficult to track, and we know that savers don't always tell administrators when their details may change, where they move home or they, they, they change their surname. And on the other hand, savers do have more complex decisions to make at retirement now. The PPI, Lost Pots, uh, Lost Pensions Survey in 2022, uh, that really showed the scale of the problem of lost pension pots as it increased by 7 billion in just four years. So the total value of lost pension pots had grown by 37%. So from 19.4 billion in 2018 to 26.6 billion in 2022. So over 2.8 million pension pots are considered lost. So that's an increase of 75% over those last four years. And the average pot is worth an average of nine, nine and a half thousand pounds. So it's a, it's a lot bigger than you'd expect. So TPR and the wider UK pensions in, industry are really supportive of dashboards. For all of these reasons, we recognise that dashboards is a really key initiative within our corporate strategy and our corporate plan. As dashboards can really help people to reconnect with those lost pensions and help to show all that information in one place and where they can seek advice, guidance and really plan for retirement. TPR will regulate the compliance of occupational schemes. There's over 3,000 schemes that are in scope and the FCA will regulate personal and stakeholder pensions, but we'll hear more from this from Sarah later. Schemes that will be in scope for pensions dashboards are those that have 100, uh, 100 relevant members, so not including those with pensions in pay payment. These schemes will stage over time and dashboards are, we understand are a big challenge. The duties will include connection, connecting to the ecosystem, matching requests with the personal data held, and then obviously returning relevant view value data. The challenges don't just stop there. Uh, with decades of underinvestment in systems and data, it is important not to underestimate the work needing to be done to get dashboards ready. And it's also important to remember that dashboards are a fantastic and huge opportunity. They alone won't fix engagement, adequacy or small pots, but they will really support better saver engagement and will drive long term over long overdue data and system improvements. I know that we've got a good mixture of attendees here today, so from employers to schemes to admins and HR, but I just wanted to take the opportunity to run through how dashboards will work and more specifically how they work for schemes. So schemes will onboard with PDP to connect to dashboards and to comply with dashboards duties. And in many cases, schemes will use third parties uh, to, to support their connection. Uh, it may even be a mix of their existing third parties. So, uh, for example, administrators or new ISPs, so that's the integrated service providers, which is an emerging market. And I'll talk more about these a little bit later on. In terms of the consumer journey, uh, the first thing that the user will need to do is authenticate themselves to prove that they are, in fact, who they say they are. Certain data will be required that can be verified, uh, for example, date of birth and surname and also additional data gathered that will be self-asserted, such as address and mobile number. They'll also need to give permission to enable a search of their pensions and retrieve their data. And once that's done, the Pension Finder Service will send out an instruction to all data providers to search for the relevant pensions. Where there is a match that is found, this is returned with a token, uh, which ensures a secure access to allow dashboards to be accessed to the date to allows it allows dashboards even sorry to access the data and display to the user 
This view data includes admin data, so where the info is from, the value data. In general, this is taken from the last uh, annual benefit statement and further info, info signposting as appropriate. If a pension scheme is not certain enough that they've made a match, uh, it should return a possible match uh, to the individual. And in case an individual could not retrieve personal data from a scheme, uh, only an error message uh, and contact details for the scheme will show. The individual then, then need to provide sufficient information for the scheme to be confident that it is a match. Partial matches also offer a good opportunity for schemes to update the data they hold uh, that might not otherwise been able to do so. And the regs do give a 30 day turnaround to confirm those partial matches. Where there is not a match that's found, there's simply no return. Uh, this is uh, avoid uh, thousands of thousands of no return data having to be fed back to the system. So uh, DWP has now led uh, amended laid in amended regulations to implement a revised approach to deliver pensions dashboards uh, and these regulations do include a connection deadline of the 31st of October 2026 with a staging profile that will be set out in guidance that will maintain a phased and well planned approach to connection. Uh, it is also important to highlight here that while connection um, it, the work connection deadline has changed, the overall regulatory framework remains the same. As for TPR, we welcome the new roadmap for the launch of dashboards. Uh, and as highlighted earlier, pension dashboard has potential to revolutionise how savers interact with their pensions. Pensions dashboards has cross-party support uh, and DWP, PDP, TPR and the FCA remain committed to their delivery. And we'll continue to work with industry to make sure uh, that dashboards happen. Uh, we know that industry is equally passionate about dashboards too. It is now up to industry to work constructively with PDP to ensure a phased and well-planned approach to, the con to connection. Uh, and it is important to highlight again here that uh, while there is a single compliance deadline, staging dates will be set out in guidance and that trustees and scheme managers must have regard to these dates. We uh, urge industry also to work with their providers as well as MAPS uh, to deliver that stage connection deadline set out in guidance that will be published by DWP and MAPS. This uh, phased approach to staging really will help to enable a controlled and well-planned connection. It will also help to reduce the risk of capacity constraints, uh, particularly for those supporting schemes and their duties, and ultimately means that savers can realise the benefits of dashboards as early as possible. What you can expect though from TPR uh, and how we'll be supporting schemes with their compliance, uh, will we recognise the importance of schemes um, supporting schemes through this process will continue to engage with industry to provide comms and education to support trustees and scheme managers to meet their duties we engage regularly with the with wypf and we meet with psps across the board and we recognize the, the specific nuances and challenges that psps face in getting ready for dashboards uh, we will also be launching a campaign in october that will encourage schemes to continue in their preparation duties for dashboards uh, especially in respect to member data, uh, which will take time to coordinate. The, the campaign will also promote our checklist, which is a very handy way of keeping track of the tasks needing to be completed. Uh, and we are advising schemes that they should use it as a tool to help them manage their workload, especially when working with third parties. Uh, we will uh, write to schemes when the guidance for connection has been published. Uh, and we have provided guidance, including uh, our checklist as well. As I've mentioned previously, we can share links to that after today. Uh, it is important um, that, that you can provide reasoning for your decisions and relevant actions, uh, making sure that they're clearly considered as well as documented, um, as well as knowing the relevant risks um, and evaluating those and working alongside that, that, that checklist can, can help you to keep that audit trail there. So what should scheme managers be doing now? Well, as, as well as McLeod, we understand there is a lot of legislative change on the horizon with data and, and data being common and fundamental element across these scheme duties. 
Although the staging dates are yet to be set in guidance, at the moment there's still a lot of work involved in preparing for dashboards. The preparation for dashboards takes time. Uh, it is an important. It is important to continue with this work, um, inclu including looking at those all those aspects of your duties. So, including matching members to their pension, being able to provide accurate value information. We are urging schemes, as I've already touched on, to adhere to the connection timeline that will be published, uh, ensuring that they have regard to this guidance and knowing that failing to do so is a breach. Um, we are employing schemes to knock down tools uh, whilst we're waiting for these new dates to be confirmed. It is important to highlight that connection is only one piece of the dashboard's puzzle. Uh, our key messaging here for scheme managers in particular is to actively engage with those parties in, that are playing supporting roles. So those administrators and ISPs I mentioned previously to assess the potential impact of the changes uh, on, on their schemes and to work to agree a practical delivery plan. Again, utilising that checklist to help do so. Uh, to continue activity on getting to grips with that member data. To avoid competing demands on capacity and other resources. Uh, and remembering to include dashboards as an agenda item at the scheme and project board. This really helps to keep abreast of progress and, and the highest levels, even if it is just a short update on the current position. And I know I keep banging the data drum, but it is important to continue to focus attention on the preparations in particular around data uh, and not leaving it to the last minute and getting caught up in the rush. There is a lot to do to prepare and to make sure that you understand that needs to be done, uh, those things that need to be put in place so that you can take the ac uh, action where needed. Um, we are also recommending looking at data um, and other projects that you have ongoing at the moment through a dashboards lens as well. Um, it does take time. Uh, there's, there's time taken. It needs time needing to be spent on cleansing and updating then data uh, that will benefit the saver and schemes later. And as an employer, it is, this is where you can really help. Uh, our guidance is a good starting point, which includes that, that checklist, as I mentioned, uh, that can use to help keep on track. But it's also worth noting that this is an opportunity to get ahead of the game or catch up with the, where those have been struggling previously. We know uh, I've touched on here what scheme managers be do, should be doing, but for employers at the moment, we know that savers often forget to update payroll, uh, their pension schemes and uh, their personal information when it changes. So as I've touched on before, when after marriage, changes of names, uh, moving house, even new email addresses, using those on email addresses, using personal email addresses. Uh, this is particularly useful for keeping in touch with savers, uh, but few savers do provide these. It's important uh, that your employees keep their personal details up to date, as otherwise this could lead to a loss of benefits. Uh, and clearly there is a role for, for the employer here to help ensure that you're providing the scheme with the most accurate up to date information, especially leaving dates. Um, that you can also help encourage your staff to keep their personal details up to date with yourselves and also working with your scheme provider to make sure uh, that savings uh, don't go unclaimed. So just uh, included this for a summary on, on, on my side today. Uh, this is sort of the key steps to be considering when getting data dashboards ready before I hand over to Sarah. But then the real messages here for me are in understanding that personal data and what that personal data will receive from dashboards within a find request and the information that you'll need to return. Assessing, so assess what this means for your schemes, where your key challenges are likely to lie in terms of quality and digital accessibility, for example, or the approach take, uh, to take where you have multiple administrators or AVC providers uh, to consider what data items you have more and less confidence in, in terms of setting the matching criteria of your schemes. You'll need to set matching criteria for full and partial matches and, and consider how you'll manage these. Another element to, to think about um, and the rent to think about with matching is where you have multiple sections of that scheme, so the ABC element, uh, and where there may be discrepancies in the data quality for each of those. Uh, it may be more suitable for ha to have, in this instance, more than one set of matching criteria. 
um, consider. Consider how you'll be calculating the value data so that this is provided in line with dashboard requirements and consider how long you have to return this uh, to the dashboards. And perhaps most importantly, put a pan in place. Uh, what do you need to do to improve and maintain your data so that you're matching the right people with the right pensions and returning the right information to dashboards within the expected time scales? I've taken you on a sort of whistle stop tour of, of dashboards and what scheme managers and employers and those in a supporting role should be doing today. But I think uh, this is the perfect time to, to hand over to Sarah. So over to you, Sarah. Super, thanks very much, Emma. And um, that was a, a very in-depth tour of dashboards. Um, and good morning, everyone. Thanks again for your time this morning. Um, my name's Sarah Harvey. I work in the policy team um, specifically on the dashboards project. And I'd just like to take you through a, key, a few key points of policy um, for this project this morning. Um, so because this is such a, a wide ranging, um, all encompassing, uh, initiative and um, we, we appreciate that it's it's a huge ask of everyone involved and um, we have consulted on a draft compliance and enforcement policy um, and I just wanted to take you through the, the key aspects of that policy this morning and um, so it is principles based and um, we we have appreciated that this is a brand new initiative and therefore we will be risk-based and proportionate where we will target our resources on what we think we can achieve as an outcome and um, our focus for this whole initiative is on the saver and um, so the the benefits that this can provide um, to pension members uh, being able to um, re-engage with their pension parts as, as Emma explained um, in the strategic overview and um, there's a, a huge amount of lost pots in this country and it's important that we try and engage with the saver um, so that they make informed decisions about their retirement. Um, as part of this, um, we, we are also looking at um, the quality of data. It, it's a, again, I'll, I'll talk through this in the next slide, um, but data is, is such a, a fundamental aspect of the success of dashboards. Um, so from the very first initial um, data submission um, to the employer, how that flows through to the trustee and how that then enables um, the dashboards to match to the saver as well. And um, so it's it's a big data task and we, we appreciate that that is a lot of work, um, but it's fundamental for the outcome of the dashboard. Um, so our compliance enforcement policy um, is also going to be data led and um, the information will flow to us um, from the dashboard that PDP is, is setting up and um, it will identify non-compliance and potential non-compliance so we will be looking at themes and potential risks of that as well and um, we have a, a range of new powers which have been introduced from the dashboard regulations uh, specific to dashboards as well and um, so these Regulate, uh, sorry, these powers have been designed so that we are able to operate at scale and um, because there, there's a huge number of schemes that will be uh, involved in the scope of dashboards. Um, these include uh, a potential to issue compliance notices, um, penalty notices and uh, relevant to this conversation as well as third party compliance notices. Um, so although our uh, regulation regulation um, is focused on the trustees and scheme managers of occupational pension schemes and um, this regulation the reg dashboard regulations have introduced third party powers um, because we understand that this the success of dashboards is highly um, dependent on third parties working together as well and um, things like data as well as um, administration and connection through ISP providers um, so it, it's not just a focus on the trustees and scheme managers. We will be looking at impacts that third parties have made to the success of this project as well. Um, we also have the utilisation of our existing powers. Um, so they include information gathering powers um, as well as powers which include uh, governance um, overviews as well, uh, which can include removing and replacing trustees. Um, our initial consultation was based on the original regulations um, and as Emma explained there has been an amendment to these regulations which includes um, the, the one date in legislation 
and then the staging profile and guidance, which trustees must have regard to. Um, we are currently considering um, the scope of uh, what, what we can do with the have regards aspect of it. Um, the guidance is, is underway at the moment, so it's, it's not been published yet, but we're expecting that relatively soon. Um, so we, we are continuing to work with industry um, to identify what support they need from us in regards to having regard to the guidance. Um, so there, there may be updates on this, uh, there may be a further consultation on that aspect. Um, but as, as Emma also explained, the wider regulatory overview um, is not changing, it's just the connection aspect of it. Um, so it's the connection part of the compliance enforcement policy, which we are reviewing at the moment. Um, and just to reiterate, we, we do appreciate that this is a brand new initiative and it is a, a huge impact on industry. Um, so we, we will be pragmatic and proportionate in our compliance enforcement approach. Um, however, where we see willful or neglig negligent non-compliance, we will be robust um, for um, to ensure that the safer outcomes um, are optimal um, so that they are able to use the dashboard uh, for the purposes um, that, that were initially intended. So I, I hope that gives a whistle-stop tour of our compliance enforcement approach. Um, there will be more to come on this, um, but it, it is under, underway at the moment. So if I can take you through a piece of work that we're doing at the moment. So um, as I explained, we, we do have third party powers um, for this, uh, the dashboards project as well. Um, and as, as I'm sure everyone has, has heard many, many times, um, data is such a fundamental aspect to the success of this project. Um, interestingly, we joined a little early and um, I had the previous speaker uh, giving you an overview of the, the data submissions in, in that respect as well. Um, so it's, it's good to hear that it's, it's on agendas um, all round. Um, we have recently undertaken a piece of work um, to further understand this flow of information. Um, we are hearing from certain schemes that there, there is an issue with data submission and this is going to impact their ability to match people to their pension pots, um, which is the in entire purpose of, of dashboards is, is to find people and to update them on their pensions. Um, so this, this is something that we're very interested in and to try and see if, if we can come up with any solutions ahead of the introduction of dashboards. Um, so we're, we're very aware that, that data is a tricky subject and it is something that's continually under review um, and is, is a lot of work for everyone. Um, but we've recently performed a survey um, with a, a select number of schemes um, to further understand um, the, the flow of data from the employer to the scheme and um, what processes are in place and um, what challenges are being faced and any good practice as well. Um, we are currently reviewing the outcome of this survey um, and we are looking to potentially use that to uh, inform targeted messaging and um, if there are any lessons learned or any helpful advice that we can give to, to schemes and to employers as well. Um, we do have existing employer record keeping duties, which this is based on. And um, so it's to inform whether we need to update that in regards to dashboards um, or if there's any other communications that we need to be making as well. And um, so just to, to raise this for, to your awareness and um, that this is a piece of work that we're undertaking. Um, Although it's focused on dashboards, we're aware, as, as Emma said, um, that there is a huge range of um, regula regulatory updates as well um, and a lot of uh, legislation that is being updated. Um, so data is, is a fundam fundamental aspect to the well running of every scheme um, and it, it is a main focus of, of, of good outcomes. Um, so that this is a key driver uh, for the success of um, numerous projects, not just dashboards. Um, so we, we hope to have outcomes from this um, before the end of the year, potentially next year, um, but it will certainly be before um, the uh, dashboards is available to the public. Um, so just, I just wanted to raise this um, as, as an awareness uh, that this is a piece of work they're undertaking at the moment. And that was everything from me. I don't know if you had anything more, Emma. 
Uh, no, nothing for me. So I just thought um, if we had time just to open the floor to, to any questions. Yeah, we do have a little bit of time before uh, the next the next speaker is due. So we've, we, we do have till half past 11. So if anybody does have any questions um, for um, Sarah or Emma at the pensions regulator, if you want to um, raise your hand and uh, we can we can field those now. Um, if not, uh, we can just we can just move to the next speaker. So anybody have any questions at all? Any raised hands? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Oh, yeah, we've got a couple now. Um, OK, so Judy, do you want to um, take yourself off mute and ask away? Uh, yes, certainly. Um, Judy Benson from uh, PSPS, uh, delivering services to PSPS um, and three councils. Um, I feel quite excited, actually, even though some people might think I'm sad. Um, mm -hmm. I love dashboards um, because it gives that top top level information. Um, and I am very appreciative of the fact of the recognition that people do move around from jobs, from voluntary sector, private sector, public sector, and I am included in that. So so I think my simple question is to you to make sure I've understood it. So what I can look forward to is going into one site, whatever that site is, and seeing all my pots of pension contributions over the years in one place. Am I right? That that's the policy initiative. And so it, the, the the outcome of this should be for people to be able to see yeah. um the, the variety of um yeah pots that they've accumulated throughout yeah. their their employment and um, that's yeah. why data is such an important part of this yeah. so that we yeah. can find the people and um, who who want to look at this information yeah, yeah. so rather than having to access each individual pot and all different passwords and everything and be i'm, I'm sorry I, i've it's I, i'm really sorry i missed that the last okay. part of that question okay so 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 ra ra rather than at the moment as i as people would have to do go into their own pension providers um and log on and see detail just in those individual ones we will see them together that's right brilliant thank you okay thanks judy um question from helen do you want to yeah hi perfect yeah yeah, so my name's Helen um, and I work at Leeds Beckett University. I've just started here over the last couple of months. So um, I'm just trying to learn about pensions. It's very new to me. Um, so it sounds a bit like, is it a bit like the auto enrolment staging date? So will, he, will we will all sort of find out when it's going to happen? Will we get written to or will we, because I know we could find out for the, for the auto enrolment staging date, we could sort of log on and it told you with your, with your company number, told you when it was and when we had to um, comply with all that, those regulations. So is that kind of similar for, for this and also so and and the, the sort of the deadline is like October 26 so this could happen next month or next year or the year after for, is, is that how it works do you want me to say that um, yeah, that yeah um so initially and um, the original legislation had a very similar format to AE and um, staging so um it's well recognized that that that's pretty much what it was based on. Um, however, because of the change to regulations, um, there is now the one date in legislation, so all schemes must be connected by that end date. Um, and then the staging is now in guidance. Um, so it is advisable to connect um, as per the dates in guidance, um, but it's mandatory by the, the end date. Um, however, that guidance is is not yet available it, it is forthcoming and um, it's just owing to um, a, a few delays on on the build and um, they've had to delay things slightly and the, the dates are being considered at the moment um, but it, it should be a, a quite a similar format to the original uh, regulations just with the delay in mind as well so how will we find out then um, when when we need to sort of start doing it in this way it it will be issued in guidance. So okay. when that that is um, available for us to communicate to schemes and um, trustees, um, we we will be writing to schemes and scope to notify them um, when the guidance is available and um, the the date in guidance as as per their scheme um, 
for example, if, if they're over a certain number of members and um, where mm -hmm. that puts them in the guidance table. And um, we can't do that until the guidance is available, unfortunately, but we will do that as soon as we can. OK, OK, thank you. H H Helen, just just to just to extend on on that answer there, a lot, all of this work, um, all this preparation work is actually the scheme's responsibility. Um, mm -hmm. So your input as an employer is 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 basically just ongoing in terms of just continuing to supply us with um good quality data mm -hmm. so it, a, a load of work isn't just going to land on your desk to to to, mm -hmm. to prepare for this this is very much um driven by the scheme so the staging mm -hmm. date is relevant to, to the scheme but mm -hmm. for you as an employer um mm -hmm. it, it's just a constant um process of, of of good data but basically and that's where you you come into this initiative so I just wanted to, to to make that clear um the staging date is is, is the is the scheme uh, not 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 specific to the employer is that okay? so the employer is very much led by you guys so Absolutely. we just basically yes um get back to you with whatever you ask us and Correct. you'll tell us if what you need and, and how we need to give it to you and, and then everything should be fine Absolutely. Yeah, there, there might be a, a little bit of work um, that we might ask you to help us with in terms of communicating to your um, members about, about the, the, the programme, about the dashboard. Um, but yes, very, very much led by the, the scheme. Um, and this is this is more like of an awareness session just to to let you know what what what's coming. OK, that's yeah. that's comforting. Thank you. Yeah. OK. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, any other questions um, from anybody before we, we hand over to, to Stuart for the communications update? No, OK, well, thank you very much, uh, Sarah and Emma, for your input today. Uh